How do you connect with someone who suffers from delusions? I had an email the other day at traumacompanions at gmail.com and a lady said to me that her son has suffered from delusions for the last 10 years. He suffers from a delusion of persecution. Now guys, just very quickly, a delusion is a fixed idea or belief that's not shared by the rest of us, basically. It's very difficult when someone is delusional to convince them otherwise. It's not something that I ever try and do. My job remains the same regardless of who I'm with, and that is to connect with them through listening and understanding what they're trying to tell me or what they're going through. And that doesn't matter whether they've got a broken leg or they suffer from delusions. Uh, my task remains the same. And this lady was saying that she had been watching some of my videos. She understood the concept, the importance of minimizing the other junk that normally comes into our conversations and just trying to really listen and to understand the other person. But she said, how do I understand my son that has very strange beliefs as far as he believes the government is following him, he believes satellites are tracking him, um, he believed that whenever he left the house he was being followed. And she was saying to me the consequences of this illness has been incredible. He's obviously lost his job, he's become very isolated, most of the family are not wanting him around, he has no friends. He comes and goes into this woman's life. He puts up with it for as long as he can, being at home with a mother who just tried to encourage him to get help. And then he would leave and he's homeless again. And of course, there's a period of time when the family don't hear from him. But she emailed me because she said he has a tendency to come home at Christmas time. And she said, this year, instead of trying to fix him or encourage him to go to doctors, which he simply refuses, because he doesn't believe he has a problem, he believes that it's true what's happening to him, and so he doesn't need a doctor. Um, she said, this year, I want to try and understand him. I want to convey to him that I love him and that I'm listening and I just want to understand and so she said, but how do I connect with someone? How do I understand something so bizarre? And so I said, it's very important with people who are suffering a mental illness that we think about the message behind the message. What are they really telling me when they tell me something quite outlandish? So for example, if someone at work says to me, the first thing they're going to do when they get out of the mental hospital is to return to Jupiter. They've got an army there waiting and they're going to go back to Jupiter and they're going to get their army and come back to Earth simply because so many people here need help. I think about what are they really telling me? Well, what I understand by that is that they want to help people. So I said, wow, that's incredible. The first thought you have once you're well is to help other people. You see, there's no point saying to that person, well, Jupiter's a gas giant. There's really no place for your army to be standing. So do you see how irrational that is? There's no point saying that. What I'm trying to do is fix them and I can't fix them. But what I can do is listen and understand. You know, if someone tells me they're from another planet, I'll be thinking to myself, really what you're telling me is you don't feel like you fit in around here. You feel alien to your environment and I'll take that approach. If someone says to me IBM owes me a billion dollars and they refuse to pay me I'll say something like wow you've lost so much in your life. So I try and think about what's the real message that you're trying to give me behind the words you're saying. If someone says to me like they did a couple of weeks ago I'm the Virgin Mary well, my response is um, not that you're not a 2,000-year-old Jewish girl. No, I don't do that. My response to her was, your relationship with God must be so, so precious, so important. And she responded with, yes, it is, you see. So that's the response I'm looking for when I'm with anybody. 
that when I respond to them, they say, yeah, that's it. You see, they feel heard and understood. There's another team of people that will be trying to convince her she's not the Virgin Mary. And they'll be doing that through typically cognitive behavior therapy or medication. But that's not my task. My task is to understand for at least one person in their life to hear them and understand what it means. Okay? So, as I said to this lady, he believes that he's being followed. He believes that the government's watching him. So I want you to ask yourself, what would that be like? What would it be like to think that the government, the satellites, all of these things are following me? And I said, some of the feelings that come up would be um, unsafe, a lack of privacy, scared, angry, confused. See, these are just some of the thoughts and feelings that come up if I thought to myself, what if the government was following me? If I believe that, I may not want to leave the house either. So I just asked her to put herself in her son's shoes and to wonder what it would be like. What's it like when no one believes what you're saying, even though you believe it with all your heart? Think about the words the meaning behind the words. Think about what they're really trying to tell me. You know, if someone says to me, I was on the train the other day and everyone could hear what I was thinking. Imagine, imagine if you believed that was true. And I said to her, oh my goodness, to have no privacy, not even the privacy of your own thoughts. And she said, exactly. So guys, When you're with someone who is suffering, especially from a delusion, a fixed belief that just we know isn't true, then try and put yourself in their shoes and ask yourself, what are they really trying to tell me? What are they really saying? And when you do that, you will do for them what no one else is doing them because people are either avoiding them full stop or they're trying to fix them and tell them that their beliefs just aren't true. Do that and you'll build a strong connection with this person. And for once in probably a long time, they will feel heard, appreciated, respected and understood. And that's a wonderful gift to give anyone. All right, guys. God bless.